Hi everybody, welcome back to OC Avery for episode one of season four of Breeding British Birds. And I can't quite believe it's been four years since we started this series. And regular viewers of the channel will know that this series covers the weekly progress of all our British birds and our canaries breeding here at O'Saver and I'm sure this season will be like no other where we have of course our success stories with exciting moments and those moments to forget with a few failures as well that comes with breeding birds because it's never easy. So coming up in today's episode then I'm going to introduce you to our breeding pairs for the 2024 breeding season. We're going to look at the management of these birds, have a tour around the setup and we'll see what progress has been made in week one of the breeding season. So we're starting on the far wall of the bird room in a big eight foot block of UPVC breeding cages. And this is where we are housing six pairs of lesser red poles for this breeding season. Now the lesser red pole is the smaller of the red pole species that appear in the British Isles. That is compared to the mealy, which is far larger, but also is a black and white bird generally compared to these guys, which are a rich, nutty brown and quite dinky little birds as well. And they have built up themselves a reputation over the past few years online as being a troublesome yet rewarding species to breed. And that's always been my experience with them as well. So for these six pairs then, I am quite pleased with them. That's the first thing. In terms of actual quality of the birds, they have done me some winning on the show bench this past winter, which is always a good sign. So I'm quite pleased that the quality is generally there compared to previous breeding seasons. All six pairs are normal, so we don't have any mutation red poles for this year. And at least one bird in each pair was bred in the bird room last season. So we have birds that are familiar with this environment. They're familiar with these breeding cages and how I operate and the, the, the routine that I apply to them. So that's always helpful and that's always going to you know, bring us good luck, hopefully anyway, uh, for this season. Now with the nest sites for these guys, they've all got wire external nest sites that are hung on the inside. The reason for that is I found first off, the security for the hen seems to be a lot better. The hen seems to sit a lot tighter than if they're on the outside. And second of all, if I'm brushing past the cages, doing the rounds, checking for eggs, checking for chicks, doing water, doing food, then I can't nudge them off. And that is a major thing. Now we've put a bit of fake Christmas tree around that, some ivy on there. And I've also got a couple of foliage panels that I've put on the sides that are making them sort of a nice little natural nest for them, I hope. So it's going to be a few weeks before I put any nest sites in for them. And I mean the actual liners, I've got grass liners for these guys this year that we'll see in a future episode, but it's going to be probably the last week in April before I put them in because naturally in the wild, these guys will not go to nest until the start of May earlier. So I don't really want to rush them. We haven't had particularly consistent or warm weather here at the moment, although they are showing signs of quite advanced fitness, which I'm quite pleased with. Also with the lesser red poles, we have two lesser red pole hybrid pairs down here. So first off, we have a, a native goldfinch cockbird with a lesser red pole hen, another hen that I bred here last year. They're getting on really well. I've seen them feeding each other. They've been paired up for six months or so now. So I'm hoping we'll get some success with them. And uh, we do have a, a bit of a new pair I had to put together. We, we lost the uh, crossbill hen, uh, literally when I was pairing up, which is a real shame. So what I've done, and it'll be an interesting one, it's the wrong way around of doing it, is we have a, a yellow Norwich canary cockbird with a lesser red pole hen. It'd be nice if we could get some red pole meals off them. I think they'd actually be stunning birds. The only thing is, uh, it is the harder way of doing it. Usually you use a red pole cock over a canary hen, but we'll see what happens uh, and fingers crossed we might get some joy out of them. So next up then, we have four pairs of European green finches. Now, if you've watched the channel for a while, you'll know that that's quite a small number compared to previous seasons. Previously, like last year, we had eight pairs of green finches. 
What I've done this season compared to other seasons is I've cut right back to only the birds that I would say are exceptional, at least of what I have, they're the exceptional birds. So we've only got four pairs, but all of them are birds that quite, I think, would do all right in an exhibition for myself in the novice categories. So quite looking forward to that this year. It gives us a bit more time to focus on them individually rather than across so many pairs. And each pair now of these three is housed in a six foot long UPVC breeding cage. It's 18 inches high and 18 inches deep. So it's quite a large cage as they go. For the nest sites, we've got external plastic boxes or external plastic nest pans actually hung on the inside similar to the red poles. They've got a cocoa liner in there and then we've put a bit of fake Christmas tree on the outside and some foliage panels on the side. And that's going to help the hen feel safe and secure when she's on the nest. Now, these are all in condition. I've started to see the hens picking up material. I've seen the cock birds displaying it and singing to their hens, which is always a good sign. So I anticipate probably within the next week or so, we'll have a bit of action from them with a bit of nest building and hopefully some eggs to follow. Now, I'm running these two as pairs and then I have a spare hen down here. My plan for her is we're going to run one of the cock birds over in the first round, one of them over her in the second round and we'll see what happens. But I do think they're looking quite good so far and hopefully will bring us some success this season. And our fourth pair then are in the penthouse suite. This is my absolute best pair of green finches. This is my cockbird that has been winning pretty much almost every show for me in the novice sections. I think he's won like four best novice awards this year out of six shows. So he's done very well for me and I'm certainly very pleased that we've got him for this season. He's now coming into his third year. I bred him here three years ago. So I'm glad he's a fighting fit, which he has been and he's been singing and displaying to his hen. And the hen is a bird that we brought in a couple of weeks ago from one of the most successful greenfinch breeders of all time. Uh, so. We've got these guys in this, this is a six foot long flight cage. It's two feet wide and it's three feet tall. So it is sort of the largest area where I am going to be breeding them. We've got a nest site over at the far side, sort of a grass liner on the far wall. And we have a chapel style nest site with a cocoa liner. They've been getting on really well. We've put a perch either end and that two natural perches uh, and they're doing really well. So I'm very pleased with their progress so far. Once again, seen the hens picking up material, seen both of them actually sort of singing and displaying to each other. Uh, and I'm just hoping it'll be a matter of time before we get some success with them. So you guys know I like to have a bit of variety in the bird room. That's where sort of this back wall comes in. I like to have a bit of variety, keep it interesting rather than one or two species. For both myself and you guys watching the channel, you can see my experience with all sorts of different things. So first off, up here, we have a pair of Siberian bullfinches. We have a brown pastel cockbird and a normal hen. The good thing with these guys is any chicks we do get off them, we can visually sex in the nest. The reason being for this is we'll have brown pastel hens and normal cockbirds bred off this pair, which is always ideal. So anything we do get can be sexed the first day they hatch. And I'm hoping we'll have a couple of mutation bullies because they're always nice, uh, really beautiful birds as well. Next up, we have a pair of European twites, not doing anything at the moment but saying that it is probably going to be a month or so before I expect them to do anything. It needs a bit more warmer weather. And finally on the bottom, we have a secret hybrid pair that I'm going to tell you more about in a future episode, I hope anyway. If we get something off them, it'll be a world first. So stay tuned. Now, only last week when we was pairing up the birds, I went and picked up another pair of probably my favorite British bird species, and that is the hawfinch. So we have a new pair in here. They've only been here a few days. This is another six foot long flight cage. It's two feet wide and three feet tall. And we do actually have another pair outside in a flight. Um, so hopefully two pairs of hawfinches, two chances of getting some success out of them. Now, two years ago, we had a pair, we had eggs, but they were infertile. So the next step this year, if we can get them to breed is 
can we get fertile eggs? They are a notoriously difficult species to breed, but when you do breed them, it makes it all that more rewarding. So really excited for having these guys on board. Two pairs for this season. Keep your fingers crossed for me because I'm gonna try my best to try and breed some for us. And then finally, we have the birds that, not that it guarantees success, uh, but they're pretty much the easiest thing to breed here. That is the canaries. So for this season, we have six pairs of North Dutch frill canaries. All six pairs have built up, all six pairs have got nests, and I have seen all six pairs of them mating. And to say they've only been paired up less than a week, uh, that's a pretty good start if you ask me. So we have three pairs of whites, most of them being unflighted birds that we bred here last year. Actually, all of them except one cock bird. So that's quite a good start. They're doing well. And uh, for this pair here, they laid the first egg this morning, which is the first egg of the 2024 breeding season here at O.C. Avery. We then have two pairs of cinnamon North Dutch frills. So we have a self green hen with a variegated cinnamon cock bird. They've built up again, seen them mating, just waiting for an egg, which I thought would have come this morning. We have in the center, a clear cinnamon hen that we bred here last year with a flighted cockbird who is actually uh, father to a number of the clear buff hens that we have. And then finally, we have an absolute standard pair of normals, which are clears. Uh, so six pairs of North Dutch frills, all really good quality birds most of them having been bred here last year. So hopefully we'll get some success with them. Uh, they are quite free breeders as I experienced last year uh, and very good parents as well. So they'll fill in as feeders if we do need them for any of the native birds that we have here. The condition of the birds plays a key role in having a successful breeding season. It isn't just condition alone that will bring you a successful breeding season. There's a number of different factors that come into play, but half of it with native birds does seem that it's if they fancy breeding or not, not that you've met all these different bullet points because they can be quite funny little birds at times. Now, the first thing is everything has been getting egg food, twice a week and they've all been eating it pretty much other than the whole finches which have had a smell had a little bit of a taste and aren't too sure at the moment next up everything that is a native bird not a canary has been getting a little bit of live food in the wild now that it has warmed up a bit wild birds will start to find a little bit of insects now so i'm starting to do the same and keeping it on the same cycle for our birds i've been given a couple of mealworms and a couple of pinkies probably only once a week and that increase in protein will do them good and a couple of them will be rearing their chicks on that as well in a few weeks or months time and finally a little bit of conditioning seed has been going in for them as well but only a small amount at this moment in time they're all on quite good quality seed mixes so i don't want to make their diet too rich and they put a load of weight on because believe me particularly like green finches uh, they'll eat everything that you put in for them on the topic of diet then, something that has been a point of interest for keepers around the world has been complete nutritional supplements for birds that replaces hard seed. So this is perfect for finches and canaries. There's all sorts of different types, but for this season, I'm going to be trying Unico feed. So this is the reproduction food and it's like a powder or a pellet. I've got a number of different types. And what I've done is I'm going to be comparing it to hard seed. So I've got three pairs of canaries with the Unico feed and three pairs without it. And we're going to look at their progress throughout the season, see how they found it. And we'll look at some statistics at the end of the season and see if it's made a difference in our breeding results and the general health of the birds. And finally, I have given it a couple of native birds as well, but they're not too sure about it at the moment, but I'll keep you up to date anyway. It smells lovely, so I'm hoping it might bring us some success. Light contributes massively to the breeding season with our birds. Because most of these birds are from the Northern Hemisphere, there's massive changes in daylight cycles in summer and winter. So in the UK at least, with our birds, as light increases, the condition of the birds increases, hence why there's so many different changes with our native birds. So at the moment in time, 
The LED lights come on in here at 6.30 in the morning and go off at 7 p.m. at night. The birds wake up with the sunrise and go to sleep with the sunset. And that works really well for me following the natural daylight cycle. And something new that I've got in for this breeding season is the Arcadia Luminize full spectrum lighting. I've got one bar for each flight cage. We have one for the pair of hawfinches, one for the pair of green finches. These follow to an exact minute the lighting schedule of nature and it works really well. They dim and they come on and it's it's fantastic. So really looking forward to trying them this breeding season and we'll see what differences it makes compared to birds that aren't on it. Uh, and maybe it's something that we look at investing for in the future and I'll keep you up to date with my thoughts on it uh, throughout the season and at the end of the breeding season as well. Anyway, everyone, that's all we've got time for in episode one of Breeding British Birds series four. So I hope you've enjoyed it today. If you'd like to follow the progress of all our birds throughout the breeding season, see everything we get up to here at OC Avery, then please make sure to subscribe down below, smash a like on this video and follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok to see regular updates and behind the scenes footage of all of our birds. Now, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.